preaches a form of prosperity gospel, a belief that God rewards the faithful with material wealth. Pastor Toby would always preach about being financially motivated, being healthy and wealthy in Christ. He claims the church, which started around eight years ago, turns violent gang members away from crime. It's caught the attention of the media. Over 55% of the people in the church were ex-gang members, drug dealers. We had over 1,000 people, young men, came forward to renounce that life. How would you define this back? We may be ahead of our time, but it's revolutionary. It's doing church in a completely different way. Not all worshippers are from gangs. Many join because the church promises to help them succeed financially, even setting them up in business. It's easy to see why SPAC Nation is so attractive for young people. But on social media, serious concerns have been surfacing about the church's fundraising activities, prompted by this Instagram post, which went viral. So I want to know why the church that's supposed to be helping young people is encouraging young people to go and open business accounts or businesses they don't have so that they can share the money. I went to meet the man asking questions about the church. Vic Santoro is an ex-offender himself. Now he's a musician and actor. Vic told me his 20-year-old brother joined SPAC Nation earlier this year. As a budding football coach, his pastor offered him a tempting proposition. My mum phoned me. Yeah. I was like, your brother started up a business. Really? And she was really excited about it. And like, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of him. He told me, no, no, these people in the church approached me and said, X, Y, Z, they can help me start a coaching thing. The pastor registered a company in Vic's brother's name and opened a business account for him with HSBC. When I was asking about the application process, he said, no, I never filled an application. I just gave them my details and they did it. So I'm straight away, I'm just thinking, that's not a church's responsibility to be doing that. The business account had an overdraft facility. How much was that? Two, 2,000 pounds, the overdraft was. 2,000 pounds? Yeah. What happens to that money? So they basically take him to the bank. He withdraws 1,400 pounds, give it to them, because it was, they said it was part of consultation fee slash helping him set this business up. But there was no business and no money in the account. In the end, Vic's brother was left £2,000 in debt to the bank. Yeah. Why do you think he fell for this? You know, there's an element of him not re doing, you know, research or being diligent enough. However, you know, in ethnic minority communities, a lot of families, like God, like faith in general, is, it's like a beacon of hope for most families. He, in his head, there's no reason why they would be trying to trick him into anything or trying to do you know, anything that can get him in potential trouble, so he would obviously take their word for it. Why would you use God's name to, to trick me? Those of you called to make money is a call. Don't give up on it. Don't let it work teach you false humility. So don't... SPAC Nation encourages worshippers to donate money to the church. It says the more they give, the more wealth and success they get back. They call it sowing seed. Toby Adiboyega even suggests how much seed members should donate every month. A basic person in the month should give a thousand pounds. I think that's normal. I think it's no big deal. It's not even that deep. Panorama has now spoken to many young people who say they felt under intense pressure to give. I know people personally that have given a thousand pounds a week. You don't ever question how you get the money. You just get the money and give. We never like openly admitted to each other about the struggles that we had in terms of giving. Like all we knew is that there was a vision that Pastor Toby has set for each member to also like have in their minds and in their hearts about the church, and then we were all supposed to like, just contribute regardless. When you are the biggest giver, it's noted. Like you will be endorsed, you will be called on stage, you will be shown love, and you'll be treated differently. God has been good to you, hallelujah. The man everyone wants to please, Toby Adiboyega. He's a charming guy and very intelligent with his wordplays and with the way he preaches. Through that psychological mind play, you want to do what Pastor Toby asks you to do. 
And in Spark Nation, you don't ever disobey your leaders. The church says it has five community units in London. They're run by Toby Adeboyega's most senior pastors. Called the generals, they lead his recruitment and fundraising. The generals are the people that are very close to Pastor Toby, the people that you bow down to and say, hello, sir, hello, ma. Um, so the first in line would be Pastor Sam. Well, it's not about the politicians. It's about the system. Samuel Okokia, or Pastor Sam as he's known, has a conviction for attempted robbery. He credits Toby Adeboyega with turning his life around. So without further ado, what I want to do now is I want to bring to the stage our father, our mentor, Pastor Toby Adeboyega. Okokia uses social media to spread the word about the fundraising targets of his leader, PT. Two or three days ago, God began to remind me about the testimony of PT regarding giving. And he began to show me that it is not too small for individuals to give 1K a week. Akokia runs what SPAC Nation calls a trap house. Trap stands for take risks and prosper. The church says it encourages pastors to open their homes to members with housing problems. But for some, it was the start of a journey into debt as the church began to look for new ways to get money. I was already quite detached from my family, um, even going through, I guess, my depression and mental health battles. So I was living by myself at the time. Nino works in advertising. He says it wasn't long before Akokia asked him for money, telling him it was to fund more trap houses for single mums. He said quite bluntly, oh, I just need £20,000 from you. If you don't want to give me £20,000 out of your own pocket, we can set up a, a loan scheme for you of £20,000. Nino says Akokia told him the £20,000 loan would buy him a stake in a property investment company. When Nino said he'd need to see proof of any shareholding, Akokia got angry. He said, well, are you saying that you don't trust a man of God? Um, and at that point, I became very uncomfortable because I had believed in this man. I had believed in, you know, the, the preaching that he gives, um, you know, the word. Nino refused to take out a loan. Akokia told us he's never approached a church member for a £20,000 investment. Lovis is 19 and was being treated for kidney cancer when she moved into Akokia's trap house last February. In trap houses, you don't have your freedom. Spat Nation is in front of you 24-7, in your ears 24-7, so you don't know anything else. What you're seeing is PT's vision. That's what he wants you to see. In March, she discovered that a four-year loan with the company Amigo had been taken out in her name. She confronted another senior pastor about it. I basically asked, um, what's happening? Why do I have a loan in my name? And they basically said the loan was for the greater good and they were going to use the money to buy a bigger trap house to accommodate more people. And I was thinking, OK, that's all well and good, but why did I not know about it? Lovis doesn't know how it happened, but we think we do. She'd previously given her personal and banking details to a recruitment agency when she applied for a job. We now know the agency was run by Akokia. How much are we talking? OK, so the loan was actually a loan of £5,000, and with repayment, it will go up to £10,000. £10,000? Yes. The loan may have been in Lovis's name, but she didn't get any of it. We've seen evidence the money was transferred to ER Management Group Limited, a company run by Akokia's brother, Emmanuel, another pastor in the church. We don't know what happened to the money next. I felt angry at first, really angry. When I wanted to uh, confront them, they said it was going to get paid, I didn't need to do anything, so I was reassured because I didn't spend a dime of that loan. Lovis says she was told the Amigo debt would be cleared using funds from a business account, but wasn't told that she'd end up being responsible for that too, leaving her in even more debt. 
quite a few documents actually. One document reveals that in February a company had been set up yeah. in her name. It had been registered as a company? Yeah, so uh, Lovers Relations Limited is the company they registered for me. So basically you have a company that you know nothing of. You don't even know what the company is based on. And I mean, these are official documents. This is real. Yes. That company was used to open a business account with HSBC. It had a £3,000 overdraft facility. Just over £2,000 was paid to a company owned by another member of SPAC Nation, a company that has now been dissolved. £600 was taken out in cash. Lovis says she knew nothing about any of it. She's been left with more than £15,000 of debt. And did you confront Pastor Sam? I spoke to him, um, asking him if he was actually uh, going to pay for the loans and actually going to do something. And most of the times he would say to me, yes, we're going to sort it out. However, there's a lot of people that uh, are basically in the same situation, so we need to be patient. And I just felt like he was constantly lying to me. What has happened here is Lovis has given her identity information, uh, probably under false premises. That information has been abused in, in the sense it's been used without her permission to obtain loans. Um, she's then been lied to, uh, had f false representations given to her about what the loan was for. All of that is dishonesty, all of that is fraud. Akokia says he's personally unaware of any incidents where an individual's details were stolen and used to take out a loan or a business bank account. He says the safety of individuals in his home is a priority. This is another of Toby Adeboyega's generals. Her name is Maria Mola. She has a string of fraud convictions, yet still ran a trap house for young women. I said to my girls this morning, I don't know what you think is happening in this house. I tell you what to do with your finances. I tell you where you're going. It's not like you have an option. If you have an option as you're leaving the house, yes, sir, as you're leaving the house, drop your key in the letter box. I need an order. A house of order is a house that will prosper. We've seen one of her WhatsApp messages in which she suggests Toby Adiboyega knows about the use of loans. The message starts, good evening leaders, and goes on to say, PT not against loans. We've also seen a WhatsApp leaders chat from inside the church in which Toby Adeboyega himself says, you guys have been good in raising loans. The church told us that loans do not fund the church. However, loans may be used to fund businesses and endeavors. Sema, a 24-year-old teaching assistant, says he was persuaded by a pastor to take out a £2,000 loan. The peer pressure is real and, uh, and the pressure from the so-called leaders, those who are above you, is uh, definitely intense. Sema says he was told the money was for a business investment and it would all be paid back. It wasn't. He left the church in December last year, but that wasn't the end of it pastors still had his bank details. A month later, he received a letter from Amigo confirming he'd been accepted for a £5,000 loan. Straight away, the day after like, I saw that, that's when obviously I contacted um, Amigo Loans. I was, I was furious. I was, like, I was legit furious. The money had already been paid out to a guarantor named on the bogus application. Amigo began a fraud investigation. So here I have um, the letter like, that's been written to my address from Amigo Loans, basically telling me of the outcome of the internal investigation. And, and what did they say in the letter? They had acknowledged that it was not me, that somebody has actually been impersonating me and pretended to be... Because it wasn't you. Because it so wasn't it... me in the first place. And I've showed them proof as well it wasn't me. Amigo concluded Sema had been the victim of fraud and wrote off his £5,000 debt. He had a lucky escape, but blamed Spac Nation. 
I haven't shared my details with anyone outside of my family uh, for years, and l l it was only Spec who I shared it with. How's that left you feeling? It made me feel confused, like upset, um, and violated to find out that somebody wants to go a step further and go behind my back and impersonate me. I'm really shocked to hear this, this type of activity because you've got people in trust who are effectively financially grooming young people. They've been completely manipulated for the worth they've got, which isn't very much financially, but it's their credit rating. And they're being groomed for gaining funds for someone else's purpose, and it's, it's wrong at every level. Like many churches, SPAC Nation is registered as a charity. Until recently, Toby Adiboyega lived in this rented £2.6 million house in Croydon. Here he is at one of the church's regular meetings. Let's just go for it. Elite report, the total funds raised year to date. 53k. Yeah. Toby Adiboyega and members of the church are totting up how much they've raised in the first five months of 2018. Across all the Connect family, the total that has been managed to be raised since from January to May is 216,240. This total this year, including crossover, is 761,440. More than three quarters of a million pounds. But that's not enough for Toby Adiboyega. But I tell you, June ending, we've got to reach a million. The church told us there is an expenditure for the year that it needs to meet in order to keep doing the work it does in the community. As a charity, SPAC Nation files accounts with the Charity Commission. They show that by the end of 2018, its annual fundraising had increased sevenfold, from £164,000 in 2016 to nearly £1.2 million. <laughs> Curtis was a member of SPAC Nation for four years. He joined in 2015 and became part of Toby Adiboyega's inner circle. When you're there, you really don't question it. You don't, you don't see the flaws in him. And if you do see the flaws, you're made to ignore it because of the word that he delivers. Curtis left at the beginning of this year. He'd seen the pressure on young worshippers to give and had become disillusioned with the church. How much money is passing hands from young people to Pastor Toby? It can vary. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's some sums that he'll ridicule to make you feel like, yeah, you're small, you can't really help me. Like, if you've come to him with like 2K, 3K, he'll ridicule you. Curtis says he witnessed large sums of cash being handed over by pastors at monthly meetings. To set the scene for me, what, what's it look like? You walk into a room, you see 14 to 15 people with bags of money and they're just some cash machines running. <laughs> it's just, yeah, they're just. And so what happens with the money? Where does it go? From there, I don't know exactly where it goes, but it goes <laughs> quickly. Fundraising targets were rising. What amount does this work need monthly? And I put it that we need one million pound monthly. One million. It just went crazy. Everyone is running around. Why was it so crazy? Because everyone wanted to hit the target. And you already know what the people go through to try and hit the target. So if you really think they're going to come up with one million pounds, it makes no sense. The church told us it would be unreasonable and far from practical to meet the million pounds a month target from young people. It says it has a large number of professional and business people in its congregation who are its primary and most generous donors. According to the church's latest charity account, just under 59,000 pounds funded five full-time staff but the accounts don't explain how the lavish lifestyle of Toby Adiboyega is being paid for. They must be getting their income from other means. Now, unless they can explain what those other means, 
um, we're left having to draw an inference that they're gaining the money from other sources which may not be legitimate. Toby Adiboyega ignored Panorama's request for an interview, but SPAC Nation told us he takes no salary from the church, but does receive gifts and support from business friends and family. Although he occupies a house, it's not for his personal use, but for church use. Gracie was 21 when she joined SPAC in 2017. She says she was duped into taking part in another fundraising scam, this time involving benefit fraud. Gracie had lost her job and could no longer afford to give. She says her pastor, Ebo Duggan, had an idea. I told him I wasn't working, so we were talking about seed. And obviously he was like to me, oh, Gracie, like you haven't been sewing and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, but you know, like I haven't been working. He was like, yeah, like you're not working, you should get universal credit to obviously support you and obviously you can give seed. I'm just like, oh yeah. I never really thought about that, makes sense. Ebo Duggan said he'd take care of the online form. All she had to do was go to the job centre and show her ID. She then received instructions via WhatsApp messages. Someone else in the congregation now has messaged me, said, oh, Gracie, when you're going to your universal credit appointment, um, send me the code. So I'm just like, uh, like, what code? And she was like, oh, when you get there, you will know. They're going to give you this code. Take a picture of it and send it to me. We've seen the messages in Gracie's online application. She handed over the code as instructed. Within 10 minutes of leaving the job center, details had been changed. She now had two children, making her eligible for a large advance payment. Yeah, then obviously my meeting was done. Next thing I know, there's like money in my account. The Department for Work and Pensions paid her £1,200 the same day. The two people who'd been messaging Gracie while she was in the job centre then told her to hand over most of the money to them. I gave £550 to the guy, then I sent £350 to the, to the girl, and then I kept the rest. Even sometimes when we know things are wrong, in that moment, I'm just thinking, oh, OK, like, Obviously, my father figure would not let something like bad, like he wouldn't tell me to do something bad, basically. So. Gracie's since been investigated by the DWP. She's been fined £600 in order to repay the 1200 I can't afford it, obviously, but I'm doing like the best I can, obviously. I'm just paying it bit by bit. My parents, obviously, they're not like rich or anything, but they've obviously said, like, listen, you've made a mistake. We're going to help you out. And, um, sorry. <laughs> oh, you're right, Gracie. Sorry. Can I just take a minute? I feel, like, heartbroken, because I'm thinking this is supposed to be, like, a family, and, like, most importantly, it's, like, God's people. And obviously, this is not how God's people are supposed to behave. The church says it's investigating and will give Gracie's pastor, Ebo Duggan, the opportunity of first response. It says Duggan, who's one of SPAC Nation's trustees, handed in his resignation to the board two weeks ago. SPAC Nation denies that either the church or Toby Adiboyega are financially exploiting young people. It says it has a robust complaints procedure and a well-run disciplinary system. It can't be responsible for what its hundreds of members do, some of whom are ex-offenders. The church has big ambitions. It says it has 2,000 young members and is expanding into universities outside London. Sir, so, uh, hostels and uni accommodation be targeted 110%. Everywhere there is young people. In October this year, Toby Adiboyega attended Boris Johnson's speech at the Tory party conference. Respect Nation has this vision of being a mega church, um, and I think that has always been the end goal. And to affiliate themselves with powerful people in the world, and I can't deny that they're successfully doing that at the moment. Former worshippers say their greatest concern now is for those who are still with the church. I feel betrayed, and I feel like. I feel anger, because not only are they doing it to more people, they're doing it to the most vulnerable people. There are people who I believe are there and that are genuinely there for Christ and for their journey with God. Um, 
but I can't stress that there is more bad than good. SPAC has to be shut down. Toby, he has to be held accountable for everything that has gone on. Certain leaders, they shouldn't be around youth. They shouldn't be around anywhere where people are vulnerable. The Charity Commission says it's launched a statutory inquiry into SPAC Nation and ordered it to bank its money. The Metropolitan Police says it's reviewing allegations of possible fraud and other offences. It will then decide whether to investigate further. In places where the church is most active, there's concern the authorities are taking too long to act. I strongly believe that, you know, it's because it's because it's black kids. But because it's black kids, it's almost seen as that's that's you that's you lot's problem. The sad thing is a lot of these young people, they are looking for something better. That is why they went to Spike Nation. Young worshippers like Lovis trusted the church to help them. Instead, they've been left burdened with huge debt. It will take them years to pay off. Ben's worried what Phil's next move might be in EastEnders on BBC One next. <laughs>